On this week's episode, I got snowed in and had to film from my bedroom, uh, but I had a wonderful time talking to Felicia Denise. Felicia is a strong mom and new grandma, and she is joyful and inspiring and shares about her journey becoming a mom at a very young age and really finding the importance of taking care of herself, uh, self-discipline, and moving for the health of her own sake as well as her children's sake. Hi, you guys. Welcome back to the SP Mamas podcast. I am Carolina, the street parking pregnancy and postpartum coach. And my guest today is Felicia Denise. Some of you guys might uh, recognize her from Instagram. She is always sharing really inspiring, um, motivating content about workouts, but also mindset. And that's what I love so much about uh, following her on Instagram. So welcome, Felicia. Thank you so much for joining me today. Yes. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And um, so Felicia, you, how long have you been a member of street parking for? Um, it is going on nine months, nine months since I've been with street parking, um, actually started during the pandemic. It was a, a mother's day gift from my, my son. So he got, he got it for me for mother's day. Mm -hmm. I was only going to do three months. And by the second month I was hooked and, um, the, from the community, the people I was meeting in street parking, the workouts, and I was just having a really good time. So I just was like, all right, I'm gonna just do the year membership and just, you know, keep on going with it. it, it, it so I've nine months, nine awesome. months. Awesome. And you are in uh, New Jersey, is that right? Yes, I am. I am in New Jersey, Middlesex County, Sayreville, New Jersey. Yes, I am. All right. Yeah, I love. Um, so Felicia's IG handle is uh, sandbags and barbells at sandbags and barbells. We'll include that in the notes. Um, but you've got to check her out because she works out outside in the snow <laughs> quite often, which is really impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for someone from Florida and spending 15 years in California, this is my first snow experience living in it. And I'm like, she's out there working out on the sidewalk. Right. <laughs> um, and then can you just tell me a little bit about um, what you were doing for like fitness before this? Cause it's very clear that you have been coaching and doing fitness for a long time. Um, how did you get into it? Well, um, it's been a passion since I was uh, very young. Um, in high school, I did cross country, I did track, I did shot put. Um, and then when the era, I'm, I'm aging myself, when the era of aerobics was out with the leotards and all that stuff, nice. I worked at, yeah, I was working as an aerobics instructor for like Living Well Ladies, Fall Lady, like a lot of um, women fitness centers. And so I just kept journeying and evolving with fitness. Um, and I just really, really took a liking to strength training. Um, so then I started doing CrossFit in 2013. Mm -hmm. um, I discovered that I really liked like the Olympic lifting, the power lifting, and I was kind of good at it. So I was like, oh, I like this. And so um, pretty much that's been my journey. And um, yeah, I do, I do coach. Um, so I, I've been active most of my, my life, most of my my life here. That's awesome. So um, today I'd love to, to talk to you about your experience with motherhood and just get your perspective. Um, I know that you have three adult or young adult children and um, you have, is it your first grandchild? 
It was my first grandbaby. Yes, my oh, first. So yes, I've, I've I've graduated to being a grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Is that, what, is that what you go by? Is it, or do you have, is it grandma as the title or do you prefer something? Um, well, I, I go by, I go by Queenie. Queenie. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So do you mind, let's go ahead and just dive into the story of you becoming a mom. And you were telling me before we started um, that birth story in particular and how um, it involves somebody getting bitten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So share with me how that, how that, that journey started for you. Um, well, at, uh, well, after, um, that experience, my, my first, um, birth, um, it, it was, I will say it was a little tax taxing, um, mentally and emotionally because I was a young mom mm -hmm. and I wasn't necessarily mature enough um, to handle the responsibility of um, parenting. So I was 19. So I, I was on the verge of being like 20, but I just, what I thought motherhood was going to be and what motherhood actually was, was entirely two different um, things. And it, and I was um, grateful that I had my mom mm -hmm. um, there to guide me and to um, kind of coach me along. Um, one of the things I did like about my mom is my mom, she held me accountable um, and she made re me responsible. She didn't, you know, always babysit. You know, it was like, no, I'm not going to babysit so you can go out and party. No. Yeah. It, it was kind of like, you have to now make wiser decisions. Yeah. So um, I grew up really quick. And um, one thing that I would always do, though, is I would always make sure I had quiet time, some me time, because it was, I felt it was overwhelming, but I also felt at the same time, if I was able to pull away sometimes, I would come back. Um, a better mom. And so I would um, pay my sister to babysit, or I would ask my mom to babysit, and I would just go off and um, work out. So that's what I, I would go out. I, I would go off. It wasn't like I would go off and like run. I would actually want the me time so I could go and work out yeah. and um, get my mind right and. Um, make sure that I was healthy so that I could be a healthy, healthy mom, but also be able to take on the responsibility that was um, there. And my son, my son's dad, um, he very supportive. So we wound, we wound up breaking up. So we didn't we wind up breaking up and um, it now became more challenging because it was two households right so yeah so but we 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 have become best friends which is crazy so everybody say why why don't you we just couldn't um we just couldn't make the relationship work for us yeah. but we made it work for for our for our child for our, for yeah. our child so um that was that experience taught me a lot um made a lot of uh errors and learned a lot i right. learned you know how to be patient with myself i learned how to um be more compassionate um towards myself and others through um parenting right um and i also was humbled a lot by being a being a, being a first time mom, um, because my my son he showed it was like you look at children and you can learn so much from them. Oh my you god! You can learn so much from their honesty, and you can learn so much from just the little things that they say to you. And you're like, wow, you know, I have this I have this little child helping me grow. 
Um, so that was, a, that, that experience was, um, it was, a, it was a good experience. And now looking at my son now, I look and I say, you know, I didn't do so bad. I, Cause you, doing, being in the process of it, you're like, oh man, I'm an awful parent. I, I just, I, I'm awful. Oh my God. I'm just failing at everything. But now looking and seeing all of the choices he's making and all of the things he's doing. And it's like, well, no, no. And um, him saying, you know, that he appreciates and he loves me. And, you know, I was, I was really good mom. So it's like, you think one thing, but your child is completely thinking of a different, a different thing. So, yeah. Um, Yeah. I feel like, you know, they're teaching you, they're teaching us stuff about ourselves, like in the little things that they say or do, but also, you know, it, it's like mirroring our own behaviors and habits and, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just so, it's so interesting how, like, if you're, if you're paying attention, they're reflecting so much back at you and you have an opportunity to either step up and grow or right. just like keep repeating the same, the same. habits, you know, um, which is, mm-hmm. it's, um, it's like confronting sometimes. You're like, oh man, I got to change this because this little person is soaking it all up. Yep. Yep. And, um, which, which is carries over into my middle son, my middle son, um, who's the one who, who gave me my first grandchild spitting. I would say he would be like my reflection, mm-hmm. my reflection, um, the thorn in the flesh. <laughs> he's that, <laughs> yeah, he's the one who is like a lot of times when he would do things, um, I would, I wouldn't get upset because I'd be like, man, I did that. I did that. I I can't even be a hypocrite. And I'd be like, I can't even be a hypocrite. I can't even be. (laughs) So a lot of the conversations with with him would be, you know, when I was your age, I did this. When I, so it was more dealing with him would be more like, I did what you did. And this was the end result. You could go ahead and do it, but you know, um, so yeah, each, each child has their own character. Um, but each child also, when you really look at your children, you can see you, you can see you, like you said, it's like a reflection. You can see and those behaviors, if they are not, um, beneficial behaviors, it's like, wow, well, I need to change that. I need to, I need to grow in this area as a parent, you know, um, and it just really makes you aware. I think as, as a mom, it made me more aware of my own um, areas that I needed to grow in so mm-hmm. that I would be able to give my, my children what they needed. Right. Um, that, that's why the me time, the quiet time was so important for me. Um, because I knew in that time I could reflect, but I also knew I could work out the stress yeah. if I was lifting weights or running. I knew that there would be a process of elimination going on of emotional stress and, or like if I was having, you know, thoughts about I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not a good enough parent. So I, that me time was so, so very important to me. I had a um, very, very, very close friend who would constantly be like, how do you do it? How are you able to go have your quiet time, your me time? I can't even do that. I can't even, I can't even imagine, you know, having that time. And I, and I, and I told her, I said, well, you have to carve it out. And then you have to get the support system of someone who can, if you say, listen, I'm going to go for an hour to work out, or I'm going to go for an hour for a walk or whatever, and get that support system. If you don't get the support you need, then no, you're not going to be able to 
have that quiet time, that me time. I just made it more, I made it part of my lifestyle. I'm like, well, if I'm going to be a mom, I, this is something I have to do because parenting is not easy. Being a, mom, a dad or a mom is not easy, but a lot of times it's, I feel like for us moms, it's more pressure because we we naturally nurture but usually our children come to us first yeah and then they'll yeah they'll come to us first and then if we no then they'll go to dad and then they'll be like it's so it's kind of like a back and forth kind of thing but yeah. usually it's, it's 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 that thing where the children lean more on the mom and so it's kind of like you have to put in your life a time where you can just go and be um, off by your, by yourself. And I, I made sure that was in my life and for all three of my children. Nothing ever changed. It was always, you know, I need that me time. And as my children got older, um, and they would see, like, as soon as they see me put on the workout clothes, they would be like, mom's about to go for her me time. Mm-hmm. And they wouldn't, they wouldn't bother me. They wouldn't ask for a snack. They wouldn't ask. They would let me go off for the hour and do my, my thing. And then once I was done, sweaty and all, mom, can I have some cookies? <laughs> so, and, 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 and I felt great. So they were asking where I'm coming off the endorphin high, right? Have ice cream. Have a, and it's like, yeah, go ahead. So See, it benefited good time. It benefited them, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel that so much in my own life right now. I think I spent the first year of my daughter's life, just like in this mentality of like, I got to do, I have to take, I have to do it all or like her, my time with her and my work for her is more important than anything else. And that has to be the priority. And then I started to feel myself, I became aware of like, you know, losing myself and and depression and anxiety and that kind of a thing. And I had to just say like, hey, I need help. I need, I had to talk to my husband and be like, it's really important for me to, to get this hour, you know? And because I was, I was like trying to squeeze in 10 minutes here, 15 minutes here. Um, and that was kind of okay. You know, just like the more than nothing stuff is okay for a lot of days. Yes. But I had to ask for like, hey, I need to dive in for like an hour to myself mm-hmm. or, you know, a more solid amount of time. But it required me seeing it and then asking for help and us setting up our life so that that could happen. Um, and it was like, it's for my, it's for my health, my mental health, you know, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. if I don't do that, then I'm irritable and impatient or resentful and bitter. And then my responses are, are not the way that I want to respond, you know? Right. Um, right. So right. Yeah, I hear that for sure. The mommy time and it, and it, you know, I think it's different for everyone. Like what, how much time it is, how frequent right. it is what you're doing in that time, but I think it's definitely worth um, making a priority as much as you can, you know? Um, And if you're in a situation, I know, gosh, these days, so many people are so isolated um, where you don't have family or anyone around to help, like, okay, well, how can we make this work? You know, let's put the, let's set up a little playpen and do more than nothing or bath time. I'm going to do my, my squats and push-ups while my kid's in the bath or whatever it is, finding a way to, to get some of that in for yourself, I think is huge. Yeah, it really is. It really is. And, and when I had my, my daughter, it was the same thing. I would literally, um, I had like a bouncy, Mm -hmm. bouncy, and put on Sesame Street, mm-hmm. bouncing, watching Sesame Street. I would just be working out. Yeah. Then when she was ready to eat, it was like, okay, she's ready to eat. So it was at least I got a you know workout in. But that is true. Every every person's need is a little different. Um, you know, some people need maybe a half hour. Some people need maybe an hour. Some people need maybe fifteen minutes. 
Um, I just found for myself the hour was good because I would work out, but I would also um, just sit and like think and, and, you know, figure out ways to improve um, being a better um, mom, a better person so that I could be a better mom. And um, each time with each child, you learn, you learn so much more and it just, it makes you more aware and it helps you to improve um, in, in parenting. And I felt, you know, by the time I had my daughter, it was really, I was, I was like, I'm breastfeeding. Cause it like, I didn't breastfeed with my sons. And so it was like a lot of things that I didn't know, or I wasn't open to. Mm-hmm. I said, I'm, I'm going to be open and do this with my, my daughter. I don't know how it's going to turn out. So I was more open and I was more, um, I think with my daughter, I was my healthiest as well. Mm-hmm. Like I changed my mindset. That's where a lot of like the mindset stuff, I started changing my mindset about um, parenting myself in the way that I do things. And I think I was my healthiest with her. Um, Cause I just, I worked out all the way through. Mm-hmm. I also changed how I, how I ate. I tried to keep it as healthy as possible. Um, Cause you know, before it was kind of like, you can eat what you want. You eat for two. Yeah. And then I kind of think, yeah, I was like, no, I'm really not eating for two right. per se. Yeah. Um, they're getting the nutrients I take in. So I started thinking in terms of, you know, I want, I want to give the best to, I want to give the best to my, my child. And I was like, well, starts right in the belly. So I just changed a lot of things. Mm. And um, I saw through her, having her, which was the heart, which was crazy because she was the hardest bird. Mm. She was, I was in labor with her for 16 hours. <laughs> yeah, I was in labor with her for 16 hours. She was... I was the healthiest, but she was the hardest. And it made no sense to me. Yeah, it made no sense. Yeah. And um, she was breached. She was, it was just a battle with her. It was like, it was like, I'm like, she doesn't want to come out. So it was so much, but I was, but I felt that because my body was in such good condition uh-huh. and because my the way I was eating, I just felt that I was able to handle it. Um, and, um, she came out, she was, she was the biggest. And it was just, it was like, wow, I, I actually saw myself growing in the process of how each child was different, but also how I was different, which eat with, with birth. Um, and so even um, raising, like raising her in the way she would eat and things like that, I, I realized that you, I guess we don't realize that what we do while we're pregnant affects the baby, even when, when they come out. So they already have, they already set up in a sense, like with the system. So I noticed as my daughter got older, she would gravitate just towards healthy stuff, like mm-hmm. healthy, you know, she, she didn't want formula she wanted breast milk she as she got older she didn't want milk she wanted soy milk she wanted different she ate she wanted food she didn't want baby food so I had to make her baby food I had to mix up her food and she would eat it but it was just watching how she didn't really want um the candies and things like that and and now seeing her now as a as a young adult is the same she eats healthy she just, it, it was kind of like, wow. So um, you kind of create this, this template for your children and then they run off with it and they evolve in it. And so that's why now I'm like, well, if I was to have a child now, which I'm not, ever, I don't want to do that, but if I was to have a child now, <laughs> I would be the best mom. And I say I don't want to do that because you know I'm I, I I'm like man I did that I graduated I'm a grandma now I got to move on yeah yeah, yeah I get to I get to I get to receive him and, and yeah. spoil him and then send him back I don't have to you know and 
that that has that that has brought me so much joy being uh like a a, a grandma you know um it's like wow and my mom which makes my mom a great grandma so she's she was ecstatic too we we're all like oh my god and so um after 20 my daughter's 23 so 23 years there was no little one now we have this little one and it, it, it's like a gift it is, it's a beautiful gift beautiful beautiful i love that yeah, you know, there there are st- the whole studies, like fields of science that uh, that studies the impact or the effects of health, habits, exercise, all of those things, tendencies in the womb and and how that will impact the rest of your life. And you know, I think it is, it's cool. Um, and it's definitely can be like really motivating to, to, to be like, okay, I'm going to get out and I'm going to take that walk today because I know that this walk, um, you know, is, is doing good things for my little human in, in the future, or I'm going to, um, you know, whatever it might be. But then on the other hand, I can, I know that there's also, and maybe that's part of this process. Um, we put so much pressure on ourselves and have these expectations of like, well, you know what? I'm having these cravings for ice cream. And like, I don't want to feel like I'm a terrible mom because I ate <laughs> ice cream during my pregnancy or like, you know what I mean? It's like, right finding the balance between like, you know, yeah, just like giving yourself some grace and also um, knowing that our decisions have a long-term impact. Um, So I'm curious about, uh, and then the other part of it, what you were talking about, like how you were healthiest with your, with your daughter, um, and in the best physical shape, I think sometimes this happens a lot. I speak, I see, especially with some of the street parking community, um, because we're so fitness oriented where it's this idea of like, well, I, you know, like, uh, the fitter you are, the easier the birth will be. And I think that that's just a huge myth and it sets us up in for this this feeling sense of failure like there are variables of birth and pregnancy and postpartum that you just cannot control and it doesn't mean yeah. that you weren't fit enough it doesn't mean that you didn't work out enough it's just part of how it goes and sometimes i wonder if we're man we're given just like the craziest little twist and turn in the story where we've got these expectations of how we think it's going to go. And then right. sure enough, sure yeah. enough, we're handed yeah. this like a uh, wild card, you know? Um, so in terms of your, um, like the births themselves, while your daughter may have been the most difficult there, you were talking about earlier on, um, like what you didn't know about the first birth and how was that for you? What would, what do you wish you would have known going into it? Like the birth itself, um, to, to be better prepared for it. Um, well, I wish that I would have known, um the actual process like the like you know um not necessarily like oh you're gonna feel all this pain but to prepare myself more mentally um in a way where i when the first pain hit i'm like oh i'm i'm kind of contracting i think with my first child it was even with my OBGYN, like he talked to me, but at the same time, I wasn't think. I would say I wasn't aware because it was it was so new. But I wasn't looking at it, not to say in a serious manner, but I I'm thinking from my perspective because I I exercise and this oh it's gonna be easy, right? Okay, <laughs> I'm not gonna have the pain and all this. So I went. <laughs> 
I went in thinking I was just going to push and boom, baby's going to come out and I'm going to be a mom. And that was totally not the situation at all. I felt as though um, I was, I want to say I felt like I was caught off guard <laughs> because yeah. I had, I, I wasn't in tune with some of the um, things that happen prior to you giving birth, like the nesting and all the different things. I was just thinking, oh, I'm just around here just doing things. And when my mom was like, no, you're nesting, you're, you're about to go into labor. And I'm like, what is, you know, I'm like, I'm not a bird. So it was kind of like, I was being very sarcastic. I was being very like, I got this, I got this under control, kind of like, I'm strong, I can handle this. And it wasn't like that at all. I was probably um, taken aback. And I, and I wish that I just had I would just say I wish I was more mature mm. in regards to like listening to the advice and the counsel that I was was being given instead of just shirking, um, the, you know, them off like, no, I got this. Yeah. I, I, it's easy for me. And, you know, acting like I had given birth before when I, I, <laughs> I never, you know, and it is just to do. So go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, it just it just made me recognize it humbled me. Yeah. First birth humbled me. Yeah. It just really it took a lot out of me. I wasn't um I wish I would have known about um, you know, the breathing, taking some some breathing classes and stuff like that. I just blew all of that the suggestions off because in my mind I was saying I, you know, I can handle this. I I'm fit. I can go in and I can just and we're gonna push because because like you said in the in your mind when you feel as though you're physically fit for things you kind of look at things from that perspective like I can handle it. I'm strong. If I can lift this amount of weight, then I can definitely push out a baby. Yeah. So you know it's just it's just <laughs> the wrong type of type of thinking. So you know. I think. <laughs> You know, it's interesting because it's like, while yes, you, well, first of all, the pushing is way different than squatting. Like, yes. Squatting might contribute to, you know, your stamina or strength, but like pushing a baby out is a different yeah. effort. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, even even that concept of when my doctor, he said, bear down. And I just felt at that point, I felt so un unsure and unready. Right. And I'm in the, I'm in the room and I'm like, I can't, I'm like, I can't do this. <laughs> I'm like, tell her, I can't do it. I can't push. I don't understand what you're telling me. He's like, bear down. So he's like, you gotta yeah. push down. So it was, that was the most humbling experience ever. And I, you know, um, my second birth, I just, I prepared. I was more like, all right, I'm going to practice. I'm going to do the breathing. I'm going to learn. I'm going to read. I'm going to educate myself. I'm not going to just shirk off with my OBGYN and say, no, this hurts. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was like, this hurts. I got to, you know, this, you can't really prepare for the pain or, or, you, it, there's no preparation for it because you know each it might you might not experience that much pain and it's you know? so yeah it's so different it's for very everybody. different each, yeah. each, it's and, very very different and, you know each child is going to be different and you know the way that all of that is so is so different but I think what happens is we kind of we underestimate how massive the transformation is not just like physically of our bodies, but mentally, um, with ourselves, our relationships to anyone and everyone around us, like it's a, it's a massive transformation. And, um, and if you're stuck in trying to cling to how things were, 
or ideas of how you think things need to be, then transformation is going to be really hard because it's going to happen whether or not you're, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, so you, uh, <clears throat> in your, in your notes, you were, you mentioned, um, something about a home birth. Is this something that, what is it that like has caught your interest about it or that you wish you would have known? Um, yeah. So I wish I would have known more about home birthing. Um, because I, 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 I look now and say, maybe I would have had my children at home because the experience, but also the connection. Like my son had actually had, had a home birth and um, it was such, it was so beautiful. <laughs> and I, I feel as though in the hospital, it's so quick. Like um, you give birth, they cut the cord, they take the baby off, you know, they lay them, they lay them there for a few, then they clean and then they, you know, run off with the baby. And then it, it's that separation mm. where with the home birth, I see, um, even with Miranda's, it's that, that connection, like your baby is, is on you, you're laying there, that togetherness. I believe that it, that bond, yeah, it, it, that bond because it's so important, and also the nutrients from mm -hmm. the umbilical cord still going into the baby. That transaction is very important, mm -hmm. and I and I and I I realized like looking like I said looking back now, it's like wow, the the um, separation, the immediate separation of the child from the parent, um, it, it kind of makes you feel like that bond, that connect, that bond is not as um, in sync. Like mm -hmm. even I look at my, my, my connection with my children in the beginning and as they grew, it was like a little distance. I look at my grandson and his dad, like it's such a, could, like it's, I, it's hard to explain and describe, wow. yeah. you know, you know it, like seeing it, I can see the difference, like the, the bonding and the connection, even how his eyes light, he's light up and he's just so enamored and it's, it's just like, wow. Um, they created this, um, this, this, this bond, mm -hmm. like being at home. So I, I just felt like the whole um, experience just made it like, like at home where the, where the child really never, I don't, I don't know, where the baby never was separated from the the family from the mom from the yeah, you, it, it gives an opportunity for the the whole experience overall to be a little bit more intimate a little more, yes. more personal yes. whereas it i think that knowing that stuff and maybe having um some support you can still advocate for yourself for to get some of those elements in a hospital setting but you might just need to like speak up for yourself a little bit more and say, Hey, I want, it's really important right. that I have this time, or it's important to me that we dim the lights or that we get some alone time as a family or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, I, I, sometimes I think that it, it's almost like there's a very, um, systematic approach to it. Yeah. And, yeah. Which is like super efficient and practical and all that. And right. then they go a different approach that um, it's just different. And so I think it's important yeah. to know both because some people might be like, I don't want to have anything to do with that. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Know. I think, I think for myself, I think I would have, but mm -hmm. I just, I didn't know 
about, you know, I didn't know about it. And, and you know, and even like you said, to advocate in the hospital, I, I, I was aloof. I didn't know. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's another thing. Like looking back on some of the things, it was like, I, w- I wish I would have known more um, about um, birth, the birth process, options, yeah. different things. You know, I, those are some of the things that I wish I would have known. Um, but I have no regrets. Um, I look at life as just, it's, it's all a learning process and, and a growing process. You know, it's just like you plant a, a garden or you plant a tree and you just nurture it and you just water it and feed it and watch it grow. That's how I kind of look at my life. Like it's, that's what it is. And, um, any mistake or error that occurred, I, I feel as though it was supposed to happen. Um, because it just, it just made me a, a better human being. And, um, that's why, you know, now I look and I can say, you know, the, the joy or the, um, lively spirit that I have, it came from, all of the things that I had to learn and grow, you know, yeah. and especially being a mom. Um, I didn't really, um, really appreciate my hard work or my efforts at parenting. Mm-hmm. I, I looked at it more of this is what I have to do it because I'm a parent right. as opposed to, you know, showing myself some grace and appreciating the fact that, I'm actually gifted to be a mom and a parent. Mm. It's a gift, yeah. um, you know, because there are some women who would love to have children and give birth and, and aren't able to. Um, so I, I now look back and I say, wow, I was given three beautiful gifts and, you know, I didn't really appreciate myself as a, as a mom I just looked at it. This is something I have to do as opposed to this is something I get to do. I get to, you know, I get to be a mom. I get to, yeah. you know, grow and raise my children and, and stuff. Yeah. Know. So that's um, the, the last thing I want to ask you about. You, in your, on your Instagram posts and stuff, you often share about, um mindset, you know, mentality uh, when it comes to health and wellness and fitness and all of that. And, um, and you talk a lot about, um, like pushing through. And, um, I think most recently I liked what you were saying about, um, make your nose mean nose. And yes. Like, <laughs> you know, to say no. And I love that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, I've heard you say before about like, just appreciating even the challenges that we get. So what would you say, um, you know, if you were coaching, not just like people working out, but if you were coaching, a new mom or a, a young parent, um, someone who's about to become a parent or who's in the middle of like those really hard times early on, what, what would you, how would you coach them? Um, well, I would coach them with the approach that they had, they, they would have to, um, look at themselves first, like I said earlier, like I didn't appreciate myself um, and didn't see it as a gift. So I would um, help them look at themselves as a gift who just created another gift and that you are going to have challenges. It's not, parenting is not easy. There's no um, book that's written to give you all the answers um, because everything's going to be different and you have to really look at yourself your how you think it's it's going to boil down to how you think and how you 
approach parenting. It's not going to be an easy process, but if you are willing to be patient with yourself, because you're going to have to have a lot of patience with yourself, and you're going to have to be able to extend that patience out to your baby, mm. you know, because it is overwhelming and postpartum is a real thing. And, you know, um, and feeling overwhelmed, burnt out and angry and different emotions because your hormones and everything is changing. You're going to have to find that grace for yourself, appreciate yourself, know that this is a actual um, gift to you um, being a mom, um, being a parent, and just be able to push through. You're going to have to be able to have the mental fortitude. And when you need help, ask for it. Because that's one of the things, as, a, as, a, as women, we sometimes don't ask for the help because we are expected in our minds not not people are not saying this but right. we are we feel like we're expected to be super super mom super woman and we don't go and say listen i i need you know help i you know but you're gonna have to especially as a young mom you need that support system and you're gonna need to find it have it quickly because the fact that your hormones and everything will be going you know coming back everything's going to be coming back but you're going to feel like overwhelmed burned out all these different things happening to you and um you just really are going to have to um love the key is love mm. you know that's what it's going to boil down to loving yourself loving you know the mistakes you're going to make because you're going to be like oh i messed that up but it's never really a mess up yeah. It's just a learning. It's just a learning curve. That's all we're doing is we're learning. Mm -hmm. And um, if we can just show ourselves more love and grace, it won't. It, the 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 blows won't hurt as bad. They won't. And um, another thing, yeah, let your nose be no. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, you got to. Because you know what? Sometimes when as a young mom or as a mom, we we just as women, we, we tend to say yes to things more so because we, we have a tendency to people please and, you know, do all those things. But yeah, you're going to have to buckle down be like, no, I can't do that. No, you know, no, I'm tired. No. So yeah. yeah, but it's, but being a parent is an actual gift. Um, you know, it really is. It's a beautiful yeah. gift. So, yeah. What would you say are, um, do you have any, for you in your life now, like what are you, what are you focused on? What are you, what are your goals right now? Um, um, so right now I um, am focusing on my own brand, um, focusing more so on um, mindset mm. so my mind body coaching um and helping women um right now i do i coach men and women but i'm leaning and and really focusing more on women um because i what i am a woman but also i find that um the women that i talk to and the women who message me um they really struggle with um, owning their lives, you know, um, it'll be like, I get questions, messages, how do you do what you do? Um, you know, and, and, and I, I do it or, you know, I wish I could be like, you No, you don't want to be me, be like me. You want to be you. Yeah. Um, but I'm seeing like women really overlook themselves because they don't feel as though, um, they have the time, they, not that they don't have the time, but they don't see the value. Yeah. They don't see the value that they hold and they hold everybody else valuable, but themselves. And so, um, that's, that's what I'm focusing on now. Um, and, you know, continually maintaining my own well being mentally and my health and, um, you know, making sure that, um, I put my own, 
um, oxygen mask on first before I try to help. <laughs> Make sure I can breathe before I, you know, because that's important too. You yeah. know, that's important finding that that balance. So, um, yeah, and just enjoying street parking. I honestly really, really enjoy um, this 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 community. I really do. I, you know, I I talk about it as if I walk into like it, like I'm going to actual physical place. <laughs> People think it's like a physical place. I'm like, no, this is it's all it's a physical place because this is on a lot all my community. But no, I don't leave my house and actually go to the street parking. Mm -hmm. I you know, um, but it's amazing, and and and, it, and actually, it is really a um, blessing. And I'm not even gonna say in disguise. It's a blessing because. Um, with everything that's happening around us, um, it, it's, it, it provides um, community and support. Like you literally connect like with people and, and it's amazing because then it spreads like wildfire. Mm -hmm. And um, that's one of the things like, you know, I didn't, I, I didn't think it was possible. I didn't think I'm, you know, I didn't think it was possible to like be part of something where you actually, you haven't met these people in the flesh, but you're like, you feel so like connected. Like if I meet them, it's going to be so much fun. You don't have to, you don't have to do the icebreakers because it's like, you know them already. So yeah, I, I really, I'm enjoying myself and, you know, um, being a grandma, that's, that's, that makes me happy. And then, um, well, I, I just found out I'm gonna be a double grandma. <laughs> so, I hit you with the web. Yeah, I'm gonna be a double grandma. My my um, oldest son just told me he's expecting. So I'm like, wow. Well, I I just feel as though, and it's my own little. It's on my own mind. I feel as though I am honored enough to be a grandmother. It's like an honor. I feel mm. like I've learned enough as a mom that I get to graduate and be a grandmother now and you know love my grandsons and my well my grandson I don't know what I'm gonna have with my, my old son. I'm just feeling I'm just feeling very joyful in in my life right now it's it's just it's just <laughs> it's just and I, I'm so happy I'm just I'm just so joyful right now it's just it's it's amazing. Like, you know, it really is. I mean, if I had hours to talk to you, I would, but <laughs> I, can feel it. I can feel it. And I, and I just, I love it so much. And it, hearing you talk and seeing you, um, you know, being able to feel that much joy, um, it's, yeah. And being able to connect with you. And honestly, I think connection is a part of that oxygen mask, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, street parking has, has provided that opportunity for connection um, with people on the other side of the country, you know? Like I'm yes. able to talk to you and yes. I feel like my own cup has been filled. And, um, and I see it happening among the street parking members and, uh, and for anyone who isn't a street parking member and is listening or watching, like, um, you know, it might sound weird. I didn't believe it either uh, before I, I dove into it. But if, you know, just like, like Felicia said, three months can turn into a year, can turn into. Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah, I already, I was like, oh yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be another year, another year, another year, <laughs> another year, another year. Again, and it's more yeah, than it's, as long as long as the community exists, it'll be, you know, it'll be one of, you know, it's, it's, it's really, I enjoy it because there is so, um, it's so much offered. Like there's something for everyone, like the SP mamas, you know, then you have the people who Ali, the past, it's so much, it's so much, um, the coaches are great. Every it's really, really a it's really a gift. It really is. And I, I'm 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 actually happy that I went past the um three months, you know. Because <laughs> I feel like this if I wouldn't have lasted the three months, if I would have 
uh, ended it in the three months, I would not, I wouldn't be talking to you. I wouldn't have all the great community and I'd probably be exercising outside by myself. <laughs> yeah, so I just, this is really, really a wonderful experience. Um, I just feel everything is how it should be. I'm supposed to be, this is where I'm supposed to be. And I just, it's just a wonderful thing. And so for all the moms out there, young moms, um, moms with teens, you know, just, just love yourself, love, you love your family, love your children and, and just show patience and, and, and grace because in the end, once your children are all adults and once you get to that level, grandma, if you're going to be one, you'll see that it's all of this is nothing but a beautiful gift. It's, it's a very beautiful gift that we should all appreciate. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for sharing your story and some of your heart with us. Uh, I... I'm so excited for you and this next level that you're on. <laughs> um, Thank you for having me. I, I, I'm, I'm very, very honored that you would have me as on SP Mamas. <laughs> pleasure. Mom, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was nice talking to you. Thank you guys. And I will see you on the next episode. Okay, so thank you, Felicia. Um, this episode will likely air um, at the end of the of February or beginning of March. Um, and we'll share it on YouTube and Spotify and all those platforms. And I'll make sure that I tag you. And um, I, I will reach out to you at some point to get a picture. Um, and it could be a picture of just you, or it could be a picture of you and your kids or whatever you want, but something that I can share with the episode when it releases. Oh, okay. All yeah. right. Yeah. I'll reach it'll, out. Probably be of, it'll probably be a picture of me and, and my kids and, and my, my whole little tribe, my mom and Seth, my tribe. I would love that. <laughs> awesome. Thank you again. And uh, please let me know if you have any questions or if you need anything, I'm, I'm here for you. Thank you so much. Thank my you. Pleasure. Okay. Bye-bye. See you.